Hey guys, welcome to something we haven't done in a long time, Tommy. Yeah, that's right. So it's fleet update day here at TFL. So we're going to talk about the cars that we own, the cars that we're long-terming, and the cars that are going away here very shortly. Yeah, it's a behind-the-scenes look at what's coming up on TFL. But first, this ad. It took a while to get up here. We started out around 1959. But we didn't do all that just to get here. We did it to give you a truck that'll take you anywhere. This is the new Nissan. All right, Tommy, um, let's start with the Mustang because this Mustang can be yours. Tell them how. Yeah, so we did a series called Stud to Dud where we bought three 1990s iconic sports cars and then did a series around them. And this was the winner of the series by a long margin, the Ford Mustang SN95. This is a really nice example. It's going up for sale as we speak over at tflbids.com. It's, it's an auction. It's ending tomorrow, actually. So you definitely want to check that out if you are looking for a really nice Mustang under 80,000 miles. We spent some money on it, actually, fixing the... Uh, EVAP um, system, so spent, <laughs> spent a lot of money actually getting that sorted, but it's a really solid car, um, AC works, uh, just about everything works, it's a fantastic vehicle. Yeah, everything works, uh, and it's got a performance air intake and a performance exhaust, uh, and so it's a really good example of an SN95 Mustang, and hey, let's throw in the bra at no additional cost. Yeah, the LeBra will certainly come with it, <laughs> absolutely, but it's pretty cool, this car only I think has, I think we're the third owner, and there's a little sheet that a previous owner held that had um, all the services he did, and he was doing like oil changes between 1,500 and 3,000 miles for like 75,000 miles, which is pretty nuts. So yeah, really good little car, um, super fun. Does great burnouts, as you've seen in the series. Convertible top, top works. Top works like a charm, tflbids.com. Now over here uh, is an Ionic uh, 5 that we are gonna be using for something next month, uh, which is something really fun. And that is, I had this crazy idea, or actually Nathan had this idea to do the cannonball run, but you know, that's kind of illegal, Tommy. Yeah, it's pretty dangerous. So we're gonna do our own version of that called Disney to Disney, where we're gonna drive this electric Hyundai from Disneyland in Anaheim, California to Disney World in Orlando, and then we're supporting a good cause along the way, so it's gonna be an epic road trip adventure in a fully electric Hyundai. Wait, wait hold on, you're, you're kind of glossing over a couple of things. First, it's not we, it's gonna be me and Nathan and Cole who's behind the camera. Then, the thing we're trying to go for is we're gonna to try to set a record to see how fast at the speed limit, we can drive this from D to D. So we're gonna do it in one stop, 3,000 miles, the three of us in this car for something like three days. It's gonna be uh, quite the adventure that I think uh, I'm not looking forward to, but uh, heck, every so often you gotta do something that's a little bit uncomfortable and that's fun to watch. All right, how about this guy, Tommy? Yeah, this is a 92 Mercedes SL that was the loser in our series, actually. <laughs> Um, the, I don't know what the plan is for this. It's got issues. It does have issues. It runs pretty well, it drives pretty well, and it's very rest-free. But apart from that, it's got some issues. Um, so we'll probably end up selling it here. So if you're looking for a pretty cool SL project, <laughs> send us an email, info at TFL car. Um, but yeah, we'll figure out what to do. Yeah, it's got it. the hard top, it's got the soft top that works. Of sort, course, sort of works. Well, it squirts hydraulic fluid on e, your lap. But yeah. the, if you ignore that, then it's okay, and the seats don't really move. But otherwise, it's a really good car, so if you're interested, before we put it on TFL vids, uh, the paint's good. Paint is very good. And, yeah. the, t and the wheels are good. The tires are bad, though. The tires are bad, but the wheels are good. The, uh, wheel, the wheels are, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a solid project for somebody, we'll put it that way. Uh, yeah. The engine runs pretty well and the transmission is good. It's funny because it doesn't have a lot of miles, but it's sad for a long time, yeah, which that's is sometimes issue. just as bad. What about the Bronco? Yeah, so this is a long-term Ford Bronco. This thing has been with us, actually, for well over a year at this point. Um, and it's, <laughs> so the, the thing is we buy these vehicles to keep into videos here around and we'd love to keep them for like years and years and years to put a lot of miles on to do long-term testing with. But the issue is, is after so much time, people just get really bored of watching the same video. So we sell a car pretty quickly to move on to the next one so that we can keep the content fresh and entertaining. Um, now the Bronco is one that's been here for longer than typically we own a vehicle. Typically we own a vehicle six months to a year. We got this one back in like June of 2021. Yeah, it's hard to sell because I like it so much and we always have to have an off-roader at the office. Uh, and so this is right now our uh, office off-roader. Uh, and so we just compared it to the new Hummer EV that we bought. Uh, and so I think it's gonna stick around a little bit longer. Now this is the newest purchase, tell them about this. Yeah, this is cool. This is a 1972 Mercedes. I love the color. 250C, yeah, so it's a really low owner car. Came out of California, original paint actually. Look at that, it's really, really neat. Um, it's a very, very, 
leaky car, but it's a, it's a very nice thing to drive, an absolute little tank to cruise around in. We got some videos over on TFL Classics with this car if you want to check that out. These are really fantastic values. They're really fantastic to own. Um, and actually, we've put a lot of miles on it for a classic car, like probably a couple thousand in the last couple months. Yeah, yeah. I think they're undervalued as classics because, uh, you know, they're really a coupe version of a sedan uh, with that pillarless uh, B uh, pillar, which is glass. Pillarless B. I said that wrong. Anyway, you see what I mean. It's really cool. When you put all the windows down, it gives you this beautiful opening, uh, and I'm in love with the color. Uh, so we'll do more classics content with this. I'm hoping that you do a video, Tommy, comparing it to a modern one. Yeah, so we got the new EQE coming here very shortly, which is the electric E-Class, which is basically what this car turned into. So we'll do an old versus new on that here shortly. Now, as we step outside, we got a whole bunch of other stuff to talk about. Oh, yeah. Uh, the most interesting thing, if you guys... Uh, haven't gone to alltfl.com. Um, kind of shooting into the sun here, um, and it's kind of loud. Uh, you'll note that this is our uh, long-term Santa Cruz. Unfortunately, uh, it's parked and it's going to stay parked for a while. Tommy, tell them why. Yeah, this got a uh, a recall on the dual clutch automatic transmission. So all this, along with tens of others of Hyundai, yeah, tens, thousands, of, tens of tens of thousands, tens of thousands of other Hyundai's. So yeah, it's gonna go in for a recall here shortly. I think it's got like six or 7,000 miles on it over the last couple months. We've put a lot of miles on it, yeah. So it's gotten a lot of use, but it's a great little trucklet. Um, we use a bed for everything. It's a fantastic little transporter of smaller items and uh, we use it as like a little shop truck. It's got a great turbocharged engine. It's got all wheel drive. Um, it's really comfortable. It's a great road tripper. Yeah, and Nathan just ordered one. He told me that it's on the train heading to Denver because they're built in the States. Uh, so he should have his pretty soon. You know, that one has a dual clutch and all the dual clutches in the Hyundai, uh, not just the Santa Cruz, but you know, the rest of them are also being recalled. Uh, you can also get it in the traditional uh, automatic. Torque converter automatic. So that, I don't know if Nathan's announced that yet though. Yeah, he has, sure. We may have spilled the beans. No, for he's talked about it a lot. Yeah. Um, Anyway, so that's going to be coming here shortly. Now, some other of the classic fleet that we don't have here is we still have the 944 Turbo. Yep. I have a video with that coming up hopefully tomorrow or the next day. Uh, really cool drag race with this car. This is Case's personal C4 Corvette. Um, that's his cheap C4 he bought very, very recently. And we got a cool drag race with that. Uh, we also still have the 911, which is in a constant state of disrepair, but it's running pretty good right now. Yep. Um, and then we have the 2CV still. And then me personally, I still have my classic Mini and the newer Mini and the newest Mini. Um, Too many and then, Minis. And then the Volkswagen Beetle is my life fleet. For all you truck guys and gals, you'll note that this is the new Tundra and this happens to be uh, the hybrid, Tommy. Yeah. And what we did with that, what Andre did with that, was we maxed it out going up the Ike Gauntlet. Uh, so that video is gonna be up at TFL Truck or alltfl.com very soon. But yeah, uh, we took it, I think he towed 10,000 pounds with it. Yeah, iForce Max Tundra, that's not ours, that belongs to Toyota. Yes. That was a couple week loaner. And then this is ours, this is the long term uh, Ren 2500. You know, we've got 9,000 miles on it already. It's pretty good over yeah. the last few months. Yeah, yeah, yeah and it so gets a lot uh, of we've use. got big plans for this uh, truck. Uh, you know, we love to overland, we love to off-road. Uh, and so for the off-road channel, uh, we've partnered with the local company called Juniper Overland, mm -hmm. and we're gonna get an LU cab. Uh, we're gonna turn this into uh, you know, like a, a really cool uh, overlanding rig, so we're gonna be able to live out of it. Can't wait. I don't know if you can see what we did, but we were transporting a Bronco soft top, and um, it flipped up uh, over the tailgate on the highway and put all these scratches in the tailgate. There's one there. That was no good. See, there's one big scuff there. So, uh, yeah, that was no good. But, but yeah, the but, Ram's been really good, though. It's been very useful. Yeah, like I said, it's gonna become a really, an alley cap, for those you don't, don't know, is basically a big topper. Uh, that uh, also uh, has a rooftop tent built into it. And then we're gonna uh, build it out with water and with a heater. Uh, so we're gonna do some winter overlanding because this is a four wheel drive truck. Uh, so uh, yeah, uh, this is really unusual. Tell them about this, Tommy. So if you are over at TFL Bike, you know our um, editor there, Alex, is a really big bike guy, but he just bought this little van. This is a Suzuki um, Every? I don't know. I think it's an Every, or is, is it, it a Carry? Anyway, it's a little tiny Suzuki. It's a, uh, it's a K car. Yeah, Japanese van, right hand drive. This belonged to our friend Larry, and then Alex just bought it from Larry. And it's just the cutest little thing. It's absolutely fantastic. This actually starred in a Japanese dating show um, a bunch of years ago. So, really, really cool. It's over 25 years old, so completely legally imported. Right hand drive, though, it runs perfect. So, Alex is going to use this as his tiny, teeny weeny motorcycle hauler. So, he's going to fold the seats down and use it to carry his monkey. So that's really cool. 
Um, and here's our long-term uh, Subaru cross trick that we sold to our videographer. He's put like 30,000 miles on this. Can you believe that? <laughs> yeah, so we bought this like um, two like years ago, three years ago. A year and a half ago, yeah. two years ago, to do a video with series with, and we did, and then we were done with it. So we sold it to our videographer, Ian, who daily drives us like 50 miles each way. And I think he's got over 30,000 miles on it, a bunch of oil changes. And the thing has just been a little tank. He keeps trucking it along and it's been perfect. Now we've got two press cars here that sort of kind of compete if they were uh, powered by the uh, same thing, which they're not, but in a way they do compete. So tell them about the Genesis and the Mercedes. This is the G90, the all new full size luxury sedan. I got a video coming on TFL Cars. This is one of the best cars I've driven all year. It's an absolutely incredible value. Compared. I love the matte paint. Yeah, well, you can't rub against it, so keep a wide berth. But the part from what that- What happens if a bird poops on it? Yeah, you have to wipe it off or it could damage the paint. It's, there's all sorts of care items you have to do with the Genesis G90 um, matte paint. But the inside is incredible. The doors close electronically. There's little buttons to close the doors. There is, I've never seen this feature. feature. Yeah. There's a um, sterilizer for your phone in the rear uh, center console. That sounds like a TikTok. You put your phone in there, it sterilizes your phone. Yeah. Um, and then this car is the EQS AMG, the fully electric EQS. We did a hot or not with Paul, where a race car driver uh, took this around the track. And I do want to give an honorable shout out to the mighty RAV4. That's videographers Cole's. Um, Wait, first hold on, hold on. You, you, you buried the lead. So Paul did basically what we used to call a hot or not on this because it is the AMG version. Now uh, this has in track mode. I think over 750 horsepower, which is pretty insane for a big sedan. So if you're interested in seeing how uh, this did on the track, uh, then What you, was the lead I buried? Well, you, were, you just made it seem like, oh, Paul took it. The lead is that, that we took this, you know, AMG sedan with 750 horsepower and gave it to the hands of, of the former Stig on Top Gear USA and saw if uh, it actually uh, is worthy of the AMG banner and name, Tommy. That's the lead there. All right. All right. Well. A bunch of other cars we don't have here. So the um, FJ, FJ40 sold, yep. so that, that's no longer with us, that yeah. sold. That, that got picked up actually this week. So we were gonna do something with it, but we just didn't have the bandwidth to do anything with it. So that, that is sold. Hopefully the Mustang will sell. So I'll uh, go to TFL Biz if you're interested. Mm -hmm. uh, and then how about the Jaguar XK? Uh, that's at the mechanic, go figure getting a major leak fix, but that car is, we're trying to make cool because it's kind of this stodgy old man's car and we're, Case is working really hard to actually, we're wrapping it, we're gonna put suspension on it, wheels, tires, well, let's, go look at, let's go look at the motorcycles. That'll be cool. Of course, we have the Hummer EV, that's out here as well. So I wanna take that and uh, take it to Moab and uh, really put it through the Moab test and the weather's perfect for that. Thank I you. just can't get out of the office. I'm too busy doing all kinds of other things for a two day trip to Moab. Uh, so. so so we, we bought this this year, the uh, Yamaha TW. Yep, this is our long-term TW because everyone wanted to see it on the channel and everybody loves it. It's a great little bike, 200 cc's, goes everywhere, 55 miles an hour, what else do you need? And then next to it are two Honda units. So which are going away. The CBR 500R and the Honda Garam, which are going away. Yeah, we also have a few long-term side-by-sides. We got the Kawasaki Mule, which you have seen on TFL Off-Road. That thing has been an absolute tank. We use it for everything. We also have a new Polaris Turbo right now, which is gonna be going through the ringer here shortly. And then we got a couple of e-bikes. We got the Super 73 and this Aerial Rider as well. So uh, we're testing a little bit of everything here. Yeah, the, uh, Alex wants to, or Case and Alex want to compare these two uh, because, you know, to see how, um, like, basically a Chinese bike, which this one is, compares to, this could be also be Chinese, but. Well, but, but it's a pretty reputable brand. Yeah, yeah. This, this brand has been around a lot. I was actually just in uh, Santa Barbara and I saw these running around everywhere, Tommy. Yeah, for sure. Um, what, else, what else do we have? In terms of programs, I'm gonna go test drive the new uh, Telluride next week mm -hmm. uh, in San Antonio. How about you? Um, I'm going to BMW Test Fest, which is where they showcase all of their BMWs. That's coming up in a few weeks. And then of course, Andre and Nathan are heading over to SEMA. Uh, so we'll have a lot of SEMA coverage. Uh, I know uh, Dodge is doing something with their new electric muscle cars. Uh, plus uh, Volkswagen's probably gonna do something as well. Uh, and then after that, it's the LA Auto Show. Uh, so it's gonna be really busy for the next three weeks or four weeks before it kind of calms down before the holidays. Exactly, well, let us know what you guys think in the comments below, right? Yeah, let us know in the comments below what you wanna see, uh, what kind of making plans for next year. The biggest thing we're trying to do, uh, which I've been struggling with, I've had a really hard time with this, is we're, you know we bought this very expensive Hummer. Uh, and so I think the economy is south or certainly well on its way go to going south. So I want to buy and find the cheapest half ton in America. 
and then do a video series around that. Uh, but uh, it's been quite the struggle. Uh, I don't think the dealerships that we've been talking to seem to realize that uh, the world has shifted. <laughs> they still seem to think that, uh, uh, you know, that the trucks aren't available and that they're selling for well over stickers. So the reality of what's happening at the dealership with, versus what's happening in, in the real world economy is, is out of balance right now. And so it's been really hard trying to convince dealers that what they're asking for for their trucks is not what the trucks are worth nowadays. I, I predict, Tommy. I predict that. Well, it's, it, it's been more. I mean, we keep getting bait and switched. We keep about getting bait. Yeah, it's, people it's worse saying, than. "Oh, we have the cheapest truck," and then you call them up, and like, "Oh, well, that sold an hour ago." And like, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, it did. it's, it's the, the typical dealer shenanigans. It's it's just so depressing. I really feel for you guys out there. Uh, I'm getting to the point now, Tommy, where you know you know there's that saying, right? Just a few bad apples. In the dealership business, it may just be a few good apples, yep. like the people we work with, the Johnsons, who are great. All right, guys, well, let us know what you think in the comments below. This has been Tommy. And Roman saying, uh, see you guys next time. And, yeah, check out uh, TFL Bids if you want that Mustang. It's time for it to go. See you guys next time. Ciao.